Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Lawrence Farley. You can just call me Farley. Unless you're Chinese, feel free to use my Chinese name, Lila. Welcome to Chinese People You Should Know, the first episode. Now, first things first, who am I? I'm an American who studied Chinese for about 10 years now. Now, within that 10 years, there was a time I spent in Beijing at the Central Academy of Drama studying Chinese, and most of the Chinese I've studied has been in the context of entertainment or performance, so my knowledge is usually based about entertainment figures. So, in this series, Chinese People You Should Know, I will be concentrating on people that are in the entertainment industry, in the cultural industry. If you guys are looking for a more political or economic-based show, you might want to go to a, YouTube, a different YouTube channel because I'm certainly not qualified. If I can do that. Now, the first person I want to talk about is Gao Xiaosong, who I will now refer to as Gao. He was born in 1969, he's 48 years old, and he's a Beijing native. Now, Gao holds many titles. He's a composer, musician, author, philosopher, teacher, talk show host, film writer, director, but above all else, Gao Xiaosong is a romantic. Now, Gao is not a good looking guy, something that he, as well as other people, will often joke about on talk shows. However, what he lacks in looks, he certainly makes up for in talent and creativity. In 1991, Gao was studying at Tsinghua University, often referred to as China's Harvard. He was studying engineering. However, he dropped out because he wanted to pursue a career in music. By 1994, he wrote, produced, and composed a song called Tong Zhuo De Ni, which is poorly translated to My Old Classmate. Tongzhuo ni actually means the you that's at the same desk as me, which refers to in Chinese primary schools as well as high school, I believe. You are seated next to someone or a few people that you will be seated next to for the rest of the year. Sometimes it's for the rest of while you're at that school. Now, despite the fact that there are a ton of coming of age romance stories in China, like so many, uh, I do highly recommend this one. It's really good. It's a really charming story backed by good acting from the male and female lead. The movie also has a small role played by someone I'll definitely do an episode on in the future named Mike Sway. Shout out to my boy Mike Sway. There's one more song I do want to recommend to everybody that Gao wrote. Uh, it's called Ego Beijing Renzai Beijing, and it mixes Beijing opera and rock and roll. Um, if you study Mandarin, I highly recommend you at least carefully go through these lyrics, listen to them, appreciate them, study them, because it will help you understand why, at least for example, I consider Beijing to be one of the most charming cities I've ever been to. Now, other than composing music and film, Gao also frequently appears as well as hosts his own talk shows. His first show, Morning Call, broke records in terms of viewership, which is much more impressive when you actually sit down and watch an episode because it's usually just B-roll footage of the topic Gao is talking about split between him talking about the topic. And that's the other thing I want to mention about Gao. He is extremely knowledgeable about the West, specifically America. Gao's Chinese carries a slight Beijing accent, which for anybody that studied Chinese, usually the Beijing accent just feels more poetic. Gao honestly reminds me of like the professor you loved in college, who could take historical anecdotes as well as personal stories and weave them together into an interesting and engaging narrative. Now, Gao has a ton of other songs, movies, or even talk shows that he's been on or hosted himself. Uh, but for the sake of keeping this video nice and concise, I want to move on to the single most important line of poetry that Gao ever wrote. And that line goes like this. Now, for any of you that have studied Chinese, you know that Chinese characters often have several meanings with usually really small differences in between them. So it makes translating literary sentences like this uh, very difficult, especially into a form that has the same power of their original text. But what this sentence basically means is that other than just drifting along through life, this world has a lot more. There's poetry, there's distant lands. Now, the sentence went on to become one of the most influential lines of Chinese. To be honest with you, I think in the last hundred years. For example, the people that were born after 1970 and 1980, commonly referred to as Qi Ling Ho and Ba Ling Ho, they experienced a China that their parents, grandparents were completely unfamiliar with. If you'll remember, China opened its doors in 1978 with the open door policy. So those born after 1980 got to experience an international land of opportunity. They were the first batch in nearly half a century to leave China and explore careers elsewhere. That's where Gao comes in. His sentence came to symbolize this urge to travel, this urge to go see the rest of the world, to go read more poetry, to learn other languages, and to see distant lands. 
And just like I said in the beginning of this video, despite the fact that Gao now has, I think he's the head of the Alibaba Entertainment Group, uh, music group, he's even working in Bitcoin. At the end of the day, he's a poet. He's a romantic. And because of that, his creativity has single-handedly influenced the minds of a generation of Chinese people. You could even say of two generations of Chinese people. And it's why he's one of my personal role models. It's also why I wanted him to be the subject of the first episode of Chinese People You Should Know. Again, my name is Farley. If you guys like this video, please subscribe to my channel, help me forward the video to your friends, as well as leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.